And a uh, big day for China, Steve, certainly a big day for a lot of people who uh, got suspicions about China, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's an amazing spectacle we're witnessing today. It's just 40 minutes in. We just had President Xi Jinping uh, give his address to the people from the top of the uh, the railing there at the entrance to the Forbidden City, as tradition holds. Now we are getting the air sorties flying overhead. Uh, we have uh, attack helicopters carrying the Chinese flag. Actually, it's the flag of the People's Liberation Army with the signal Ba'i and the number 70, which signifies, of course, the 70th anniversary of the ending of World War II. And now more planes uh, billowing colored smoke, yellow, red, and blue smoke coming from uh, their tails. Now, we've heard... President Xi speak about uh, how the Chinese, in defiance of aggression, the Chinese people fought valiantly, he said, and finally won total victory against the Japanese military aggressors, thus preserving China's 5,000-year civilization and upholding the cause of peace of mankind. And this the name of this parade might be backward looking, but really this is all about President Xi Jinping portraying a position of strength to the Chinese people and to the world and Chinese unity to the Chinese people. Rich. Steve, do uh, hang on for us if you would do that. Stephen Engel there in uh, Beijing. Let's sort of bring in uh, Bloomberg News Asia government reporter at large, David Tweed. Now, uh, David, uh, Stephen was mentioning there that this was an event looking back. It's all, almost uh, an anachronism here looking at this is sort of military parades that we saw in the Soviet era. Yeah, I mean, it really does hark back to uh, the Soviet era and also, well, I mean, also back to uh, the, this sort of lack of, uh, you know, this sort of perception gap that the Chinese have got on, you know, how they perceive holding a military parade and how the rest of the world holds a military parade. Because um, I think the rest of the world looks at this and says, hold on, you know, why does a country hold a military parade? The United States has got no need for them. In a way, it sort of belies a sort of insecurity about its own um, strength and power notwithstanding exactly the message that we got from Xi Jinping which was one of you know China wants to uphold the world order that order that was put in place after World War two and that was a big headline there wasn't it? reducing personnel by 300,000 yes not That's much light -based. on detail it, yeah it, I mean <clears throat> John Gravat from IHS James <clears throat> we were talking to him about that he said well you're right okay land forces may go down by 300,000 we don't know how many they're gonna to add to the exactly. Air Force uh, or the uh, Navy. So I think we, we need to just wait a little bit but 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 the, the, the thing is that this actually presages something that we are expecting to come out from uh, China probably before the end of the month and that's the announcement of a big reorganization of the PLA, so that'll be a reorganization to put it under a joint command, more like the US style. So you'll have a joint command uh, bringing together the operations of the Navy, the Army, and the, uh, and the Air Force. Of course, China is also trying to expand its Navy, um, its Navy assets. We've seen a lot of that. That's where most of the budget's going this year. Yeah, these are some of the veterans of that uh, Second World War conflict. Okay, but. but distinct lack of Western leaders here. Uh, you know, they're looking at the politics of all this, uh, one would assume. I mean, talking it, about know, earlier. Yeah. they have sent some. We saw uh, Kenneth Clark just arrived from the UK. He's a Tory uh, uh, leader there. Uh, sorry, politician there. Not leader, certainly don't want to say that. But um, and, and Laurent Fabius has come from France. Former Prime Minister, former yes. Former Prime Minister. But they're not the leaders. The leaders are staying away. The leaders do not want to be dragged into some sort of jingoistic, nationalistic, bombastic uh, message that's coming straight from China about here. And so they're very wary about doing that. Some have decided to go. We've got the Czech uh, Prime Minister. He's there, or the Czech leader. Um, but but uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you do look at the uh, at the people who are invited and who's attended, it does look about a little thin on the ground in terms of heavyweight leaders. Vladimir Putin, of course, is there, but then again, he's returning the favor when Xi Jinping went to visit the, uh, went to attend the uh, military parade in uh, Moscow earlier this year. Uh, let me just get uh, Steve Engel in, uh, of course, in uh, Beijing. Steve, give us an idea of how this all feels on the ground. Oh, it feels very patriotic, of course, if you are Chinese, and that's uh, what uh, they are hoping to accomplish here, much like they did at the Olympics, the flags, the flag waving, the pomp and circumstance, the, the music, and of course, and now they've just uh, rolled past the veterans from the, the conflict, uh, most of them on average age 90 years old. I think the oldest one is about 102. And, uh, you know, uh, Xi Jinping really taking a page 
from past leaders. I was here in the 2009 parade celebrating the 60th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Hu Jintao was then presiding over the government and the military at that time. He pretty much said the same thing as he went up and down reviewing the troops. And, uh, you know, Tong Juman Hao, Tong Juman Ching Kula, good work, hello comrades. And uh, he was even wearing a Mao suit and evoked Mao Zedong up on, this, on the platform today. So uh, I think they're trying to give a, a sense of stability. From my initial perspective, uh, you could take 2009 parade and swap it with this one, and it looks exactly the same. The same kind of tone being set. Continuity, strength. Steve, I've got David Tweed with me. He wants to ask you a question. Yeah, well, Steve, I'm just wondering about that feeling of nationalism that you've got there, because you know it's so. It, 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 it makes me think so much differently of the sort of pageantry that we associate with nationalism in other countries, like, for example, the United Kingdom, where we often have royal weddings, but then there, you know, there are lines of people waving flags, and there's a there's the involvement of people in the in the parade. But this parade seems to be eerily absent of any crowds waving flags. Why? Why is that? Well, this is a highly orchestrated and the choreographed parade. This is uh, for the masses to watch on television. And that has been one of the big complaints if you've been uh, looking at some of the uh, Weibo or the social media comments before they're struck from the internet is, hey, why haven't I been invited if this is so-called a parade for the people? Uh, there are lots of people just off the left and right of me and in front of me, ordinary citizens, but of course they're hand-picked. They're all waving the flags, they're wearing red hats, they are playing uh, a part in the choreograph. So, this is a made-for-television event for the Chinese people and for those around the world. It is going perfectly to script so far, and that's the way they like it. Well, there we go. There, these scenes are uh, right. Uh, uh, David, um, we've also got this is marking the 70th anniversary of Japan's defeat. How do you think Tokyo is, being, is going to look at this, and is this a message to Tokyo, too? Well. I think actually Tokyo's just got to swallow this because, uh, you know, this is something which has been planned for quite a long time. We knew it was coming up. Probably the planning took place uh, at a stage of pretty cold relations between uh, Beijing and Tokyo. But what we've seen since that, uh, since this was this parade has been announced, and maybe even slightly before, is a thawing of relations. So this is really an interesting task for the uh, for the for the for the Communist Party to actually play out the fact that we potentially are going to. To see a, a, a summit between South Korea, Japan, and uh, and China, and at and the same time, this sort of message that Japan hasn't properly uh, you know, uh, responded to its responsibilities and looked history, and I quote, squarely in the face um, for its um, its uh, activities during the Second World War.